Lesson 9.2a, Exploring Areas of Circles. We can use what we know about circles and pi to help us find the formula for the area of a circle. We can make a point in the center of a sheet of paper as the center point of a circle. Then we can make a circle by using a compass. A compass is a technical drawing tool that is used to make circles and arcs. A compass has two legs connected by a hinge. And usually one leg has a spike at its end to anchor the leg. The other leg holds a pencil. At the top of the compass is a short rod about a half inch long that can be used to rotate the compass between the index finger and thumb, like that. You just put it on the rod like that. So here's my compass. I actually taped a dry erase marker to it so I could show you. We make a dot in the center of our paper so we have plenty of room to twirl the compass. We place the spike of the compass on our dot and we drag the pencil, or in my case a marker, around making a circle and leaning the compass at a slight angle helps. So if you lean your compass, if you saw me do this, I'm kind of leaning it. I'm not going straight up and down. I'm kind of leaning it off to one side and that helps me twirl it. See how I lean it? That helps twirl it. You want to make sure the spike stays in place. Now, if we don't have a compass, we can use a protractor. We can trace the arc of the protractor, and then spin the protractor around to do the bottom of the circle. We could even use a plastic lid from like a coffee can or some other food container. For those of you who like making art projects or arts and crafts, you're going to find this to be fun. After we make our circle, we cut it out and we shade half the circle. Doesn't matter if you shade the top or the bottom, as long as you shade half of the circle. Then we fold the circle in half. Then we fold it in half again, and we finally fold it in half one last time. That's going to be three folds. So after shading half the circle, we fold it in half three times until it's a small wedge shape. So it's going to look like this when we fold it the third time, okay? Now we unfold the circle and cut out the wedges we made with the fold lines. We fit the pieces together like that to form a figure that looks like a parallelogram and the base and height of the parallelogram relate to the parts of a circle. So we can see this is the edge of the circle, isn't it? It's part of the circumference and see how it's coming all across the bottom here? So that's half the circumference. One, two, three, four wedge pieces. This is half of the circumference. And then here's another half, isn't it? It's the top white part. That's the other half of the circumference. So the base of our parallelogram is half the circumference of the circle. And right here, from this point to the center is our radius, isn't it? So that's the height of our parallelogram, but it's also the radius. So the base is equal to half the circumference of the circle, or it's pi times r. It's pi times the radius, and our height is equal to the radius. Now, do you remember the area of a parallelogram is found with the formula A equals BH for area is equal to the base times the height? If the base is 3 and the height is 2, we do 3 times 2, and whatever units this is, feet, inches, centimeters, meters, whatever, we've got 6 of them for our area. So to find the area of a circle, we substitute half the circumference as pi r for the base, and the radius 
for the height. We get area is equal to half the circumference times the radius, or pi r times r. See, pi r times r. And since we have r times r, we can write it as r to the second power, or r squared. That means the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. When we made our wedges before, we folded the circle three times. If we fold the circle four times, or possibly five times, our wedge will look more like a parallelogram because the arcs won't be as obvious. Before, if our wedge was this big, you could see the arc. But if we cut this in half by folding it again, the arc is smaller and it looks a little more straight, doesn't it? It's not as obvious. When you fold to make the wedges, you got to use your nail to like really make sure the fold is secure and that you can see it. You can't just do it lightly and do it with your thumb or something. You need to really press down to make that fold. So now we know the formula for the area of a circle is a is equal to pi r squared. We can find the area of the circle to the nearest tenth, and we'll use 3.14 for pi. So it's showing us a circle with an 8 centimeter diameter. Well, we know the diameter is twice the radius. This would be the radius, wouldn't it? It would be half of this. So we know if we divide 8 by 2, it would be 4 centimeters for the radius. And we can substitute that into the formula. We have area is equal to 3.14 times 4 to the second power. And actually, all of these should be approximate symbols because we're not using the symbol for pi. We're using an approximation of 3.14, aren't we? We multiply. 4 times 4, which is 16. We multiply 3.14 times 16, and we get 50 and 24 hundredths, but it says to the nearest tenth. So we have a 2 here in the tenths place, and the 4 isn't great enough to make this round up to a 3, so we're just going to round and have 50 and 2 tenths. And remember, area is in square units. This is in centimeters, so we have 50 and 2 tenths centimeters square. Now, another thing I want to point out is some people may get confused and think, well, if this is radius squared and we know the diameter is twice the radius, we can just use the 8, but we can't. Because 4 to the second power means 4 times 4. It doesn't mean 4 plus 4. So it's very important that if you see a diameter, you divide it by 2, we get our 4, and then we do 4 to the second power, which is 16. So now we did our artwork and we had some fun and we finished 9.2a. We're going to move on to 9.2b, finding the area of a circle. We're going to use what we learned in this lesson. As you draw circles and arcs with a compass, you'll get better at it because you'll have more practice. Have a wonderful day, as always, and I hope you join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.